Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King. And today, I'm going to be giving you part 7 of What If Naruto Was a Prodigy from the Senju, Uchiha, and Uzumaki clan. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the rest of What Ifs coming your way over the other channels. Yes, I need a four of them. Which I post what if on every single day. Yes, you heard that correctly. Every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and smash that red subscribe button. And become a part of the Inmaking family. And thank you for all for helping your sports. And yeah, without further ado, don't forget to turn on the bell notification. Let's jump right into this brand new episode. Begin now guys. So the last spot we left off, they got their scroll rather quickly. Upon getting their scroll, Yujeo, Hana, and Ruta made their way throughout the forest. They arrived towards the entrance of the tower. Arriving there, the envoy that was there was rather a shock. It was written all over his face, though they could not see because of his mask, as he couldn't believe it. They had shattered the previous record that was held by the Fort Akage himself. Skipping towards the tower, Hiruzen was worried about Naruto, him being one of the youngest in the exam. There is no doubt that majority of the participants would set their sights on him, and that was something he was worried about. However, he had to have faith in Naruto's skills, knowing that Naruto was extremely strong. As Danzo came in, started showing his interest even more in Naruto. Yes, Danzo seemed to be quite interested in Naruto himself, as the child had shattered the previous record off none other than the Fort Akage. With that, everyone was focusing on him. The days passed by rather quickly. As everyone was there, everyone was gathered. Several of the teams did not pass the first exam, so they were disqualified, leaving four teams for the finals. Two members of the Taki team end up giving up, leaving only one. So the ten of them were going to the finals, as they had three days. Yes, three days. Everyone will be here to watch them participate. So with that, Naruto went training for the past three days, as everyone got ready. Even his own teammates could be his opponents, so he had to be prepared for that. They knew about his Sharingan and they knew a lot about him as well, so that was a big drawback on his part. But still, Naruto had gotten a lot stronger, as he did not want to reveal much though. Arriving towards the location, everyone was there, as he met up with Yujiyo and Hana. They all gathered as the crowd was buzzing with excitement. Naruto was the first one to fight a guy from Kumu. The guy was able to shut down all of his motive instincts and just focus on nothing else. He put himself in a sleepy state. What followed was Naruto planting the suggestion of death into his mind, something that he didn't want. It was rather scary and scared the majority of people there when they heard him screaming out. His screams were terrifying. That just go out to show how terrifying Naruto was. The rest of the matches then take place as the members fought off against each other. Hana won against Kitetsu, but in her other fight she was too well beaten up, so she wasn't able to continue and she gave up. As the other members went on, it then came time for Yujiyo and Hayate. Naruto noticed that Hayate was not well liking him at the moment for some reason. As he did not even answer when Naruto had said good luck down there, something was wrong. As Hana said that something was wrong as well. The thing was, Hayate had made a comment about Naruto and Yujiyo, saying that they were, well, something was going on there. But she said that Naruto was just her friend. It got to the point where the both of them argue about something. As she was not really holding on to much right now about their friendship. 
After all, she was too busy with even focus on something like that. As he was jealous, she knew that he had a crush on her, but if he was jealous of Naruto, one of her friends, that crush was going nowhere. As the both of their battle began, the both of them being great in Kinjutsu, however, she was wanting to prove herself. By the end of the match, he was unable to do anything really because she had poisoned him from the match started. A poison that would not kill him but subdue him. As he was taken out, she was announced the winner as she had promised Naruto that she would be fighting him in the end. So yeah guys, basically as we left off, you guys can switch across the place check to face yourself. So this is we jump right into this brand new episode. Begin now guys. We begin this in Hokage stand. As the preparations for the final match was underway, the Hokage was discussing the performance of the young contestants with his advisors and the clan heads. The younger generation has shown quite a lot of promise, already showing good knowledge on ninjutsu and excellent of use of tactics. Danzo nodded with an impassive look on his face. Indeed that is true, they certainly earned their promotions. Shikaku, you deserve a round of applause for training your squad so well, Hiruzen said. Two of your students are in the finals and even Hana performed very well in her match despite forfeiting early. Some of the clan heads laugh at the Hokage comment, even Tasumi Inuzaka, the head of the Inuzaka clan, mother of Hana. Yeah, you surprised me Shikaku, she said, looking towards him. I was quite worried for my Hana training when I first learned that you would be her sensei, given how lazy you are. Tasumi said, yeah. I never thought you would be quite successful with a genuine squad, Shikaku. In a way, Yamanaka said, in a joking manner. Shikaku snorted. I don't know if you're complimenting me or insulting me, he said. Well, on a serious note, Shikaku, Hirsen said, interrupting. I am very impressed with the work that you put in with your team. Not only did your squad perform exceptionally well, but it also has the highest successful rate of missions along all the other genuine squad this year. I didn't do much Hokage-sama, the three of them are naturally and most importantly hard working and they understand each other as teammates. I am just a proud sensei watching as they progress as ninjas. Indeed, they're on the right track. But Hiruzen, Kaharu spoke up suddenly. Is it wise to give this much freedom to Naruto? What are you trying to say Kaharu? Hiruzen asks, a warning tone in his voice. He has already had this argument about Naruto's future with his advisors in the past. You do understand that we cannot risk him. He's already getting too much attention from people. If word gets out about what he is, our village would be at a huge risk. I somewhat agree with her. Hamura said there are spies all over the crowd. They could get information and be potential threat to our village. And it's clear they have eyes on Naruto. Hiruzen knew all the risks regarding Naruto but he also understood that he could not hide the boy forever. Naruto had to fight his fights alone, just like everyone else. As Hiruzen's voice was calm as he responded. So you're suggesting that we should lock him up in some kind of cage and only use him as some kind of weapon to fight against our enemies? No, Koharu said I don't mean that. I'm just saying that we've seen enough already to promote him to the rank of Chunin. Shouldn't we pull him from the exam? I don't like the way that you're talking about my student. Shikaku spoke up as he looked towards Goharu. Besides, we should not risk upsetting the clients and the feudal lords. Typically, Shikaku doesn't like to get into useless arguments with the elders because he knew whatever anyone says, it would fall on deaf ears. And for the most part, there wasn't much that was able to work him up enough for him to bother. But he could not ignore negative comment about the village, his family, or his students. As Donzo intervened, I don't see a problem with letting the tournament continue. We just start recovering from the loss of the Uchiha clan. We can't forget that not too long ago, we were at the verge of a war with Kumo. The kid is showing off our village power to the world. We can use his growing reputation to our advantage. The kid you're talking about is a Jinjulki though. Hamira said, we cannot risk that. He's the village property. As Shikaku's eyes started to turn into a glare, Minato did not seal the biju in his own son. For him to be used and seen as a war machine, he's my student and I will not allow you to get in his way, Shikaku said. Whatever his reasons might be, the fort left us a very powerful tool. 
Donsu continued as if Shikaku had not spoken. We should use it to its full potential. His comments earn him both angry looks and nods from the clan heads. He's nobody's tool, Shikaku said, as the man started to reach his boiling point. It wasn't often that Shikaku get mad, but now. Enough, Hiroshin said, as he turned the full might of his glare upon Donzo and the elders. I've had enough of this. Be very careful what you say in front of me, Donzo. As he looked towards the others and continued, besides, this is not the time or place to have this conversation. We are here to see our Janine perform, so I don't want to hear any more arguments on this matter. Am I clear? No one spoke up. As Shikaku stood, Inuichi that was sitting beside him spoke up. Where are you going now, Shikaku, he said. For a walk, Shikaku said as he walked off. As Donzo watched him, he was getting quite attached to the kid. Donzo thought to himself. Meanwhile, as Ujo was sitting on the bed as a medical ninja was, checking over and patching up her injuries. She knew that she needed to rest, however, her mind was flooding through strategies and plans in order to fight Naruto. She had fought against him countless times during training sessions, so she knew his fighting style better than anyone else in the tournament. But he also knew her fighting style better than any of her opponents. Her fist clenched at her side. She didn't want to lose after coming this far and being known as second best to Naruto. She glanced towards her blade. It had been developed with the help of her sensei after the famous sword of the Kuzunagi which was now in the possession of Urchimaru. Of the Sanin. But after her fight with Hayate she had lost the element of surprise. Naruto had seen what she can do with it and he would be more careful and prepared. The sound of the door opening pulled her from her thoughts. She was surprised when she saw who entered. Sensei, what are you doing here? She said. What? Can't I visit my student? Shikaku said. As Yuji rolled her eyes. Of course you can, I just thought. It would be too troublesome for you to visit us. As Shikaku placed her hand on the back of his neck, seeming to be embarrassed. Well anyway, I only want to offer my congratulations on making it this far. Yuji was smirk. Thanks, Sensei, she said. But you can congratulate me after I beat Naruto. Troublesome. Don't lose your concentration during the fight. You are already at a disadvantage. Naruto will come fully fresh. And make sure that you don't fall for his mind games. As she glared at him. Thanks for the boost of confidence, Sensei, she said. Whose side are you on anyway? There's no need for you to snap at me, Purple-chan. Both of you are my students and it doesn't matter what happened from here on out. I'm already proud of the both of you. As Shikaku smiled and patted her on the head. Have you talked with Naruto or Hannah? She asked. Well, not yet. I was going to after. I finished talk with you. And just so you know, you've already done enough to impress the higher ups. So don't overdo anything and make any silly mistakes. There's no need to turn this match into some kind of personal competition. As she looked down towards the floor, she muttered. But I don't want to be known as some kind of second best to anyone, she said. Shikaku sighed as he placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. He knew that sometime Yuji and Hana felt insecure to Naruto and did not get enough credit for their efforts or actions. No one can be best in the world at everything. And when you start consider yourself the best, there will be no room for improvement. Just keep this in mind. There are things that you're good at and there are things others are good at. That is why we have friends and teammates. We cover each other's weaknesses and move forward in life together. Yu Jiu nodded. I promise. I'll do my best, Sensei, she said. Well, remember, no matter what the results may be, you and Naruto will always be winners to me. Anyway, I should be going now. I'll see you later, he said with a smile. Meanwhile, how did you not know that she was going to use something like that in her fight, Naruto asked, as he sat with Hannah. Hannah sighed. I'm telling you, Naruto, she said. I really didn't know how she developed that. All I know is she was working on some techniques with Sensei before the Chuden exam started. Then you should have told me something about it, said Naruto. Sorry to disappoint, but I don't go around gossiping about others. Besides, what is wrong if Yujiu kept a few secrets from us? Hannah said. Because it could have cost me earlier if I had fought her in the earlier rounds, Naruto said. 
as he had some doubts when he had saw her fighting completely different from the usual style that she used. But he never thought she planned something this fishy. He was glad that he did not have her as one of his first opponents. You want to talk? You've been hiding something far greater than she possessed. Don't think I don't know how you defeated your opponent. But I stay out of it. Just remember there's no difference between her or you. As Naruto stared at her, he had no response to what she just said. So he folded his arms and looked away. Hana looked at him with an amused smile as she nudged him on the shoulder. Naruto, are you pouting? She asked. As Naruto glared at her, stop talking nonsense, troublesome woman, he said. Hana slapped him over the head. Don't say troublesome idiot, you're picking up sensei bad habits. He was about to retort until someone spoke up. Who's picking up what from who? As the both of them turned their head towards the person that spoke up in surprise. Sensei? Why are you guys so surprised seeing me here, Shikaku said. It's the usual lazy expression all over his face. Shouldn't you be with the rest of the clan head, Sensei? Asked Hana. As Shikaku shrugged their shoulders, thought it would be good to check on you brats. Have you visited you jail? As Shikaku nodded in reply, then, can I go and visit her, Sensei? Hana spoke hopefully. Well, if you want to, you can go and meet her. Hana grinned as she turned to face Naruto. I'll see you later, Naruto, she said, and good luck in your match. As she rushed off to the medical room. So, what happened, Sensei? said Naruto. You look like something is bothering you. Shikaku folded his arms. It's just too troublesome to sit with a counsel for that long. As Naruto smiled. So the old people are giving you a hard time, huh? Troublesome, Shikaku said. It's nothing you should worry about. If you say so, said Naruto. As Shikaku looked at Naruto, just be careful how you use your surprise. People are not stupid, and we don't want anyone getting suspicious of you. Don't worry about it, Sensei. I'm not careless. In fact, I wanted to avoid it. I want to test myself against others without depending on it. I also don't want to reveal too much in the first round. I am not saying that you should not use your tools, Naruto. You should use whatever advantage you have in a fight. But also, don't depend on it too much. I've seen too many people going mad for power. It's all up to you how you use it, he said. As Naruto did not respond, he seemed to be in deep thought. As Shikaku smiled and roughly is here, whatever the results might be, I'm proud of you all. I couldn't ask for a better team than this, he said. Time skip. One hour later. As Naruto was standing near the entrance of the field, his arms folded his back, resting against the wall. The break was almost over any minute now. They would be called for their final match. He knew that he had a very good chance of being promoted to Chuni now. As long as he doesn't do anything too unnecessary, which would leave a bad impression on the crowd. But still, the biggest challenge for him now was Yujiu. People may call him overconfident or whatever they want, but the truth was, none of the contestants were a challenge to him except for his teammates. Especially Ujeo, it wouldn't be easy to go against her. As he heard footsteps, he glanced to his side as he saw her approaching. Her face was calm but her eyes were light up with excitement. Took you long enough. I hope you're not afraid, said Naruto. She smirked, trying to make me nervous. It won't work, Nurutakan. Good to know. I would be disappointed if you broke down so easily. Well, I hope your punches are as good as your threats, Nurutakan, she said, as her smirk never leave her face. As Naruto could not stop the smile that formed on his face. Well, good luck then, he said. After being called out by the proctor, the both of them faced one another. The crowd roared out in excitement. The examiner looked at both and gave them the signal to get ready. The final match of the Sierra Chunin exams is between Naruto Uzumaki and Yujiro Uzuki. Begin! The both of them immediately took their stances as they eye one another. Both of them waiting for the other to make their first move. Not gonna make a move, Yujiro. Finally realizing that you won't be able to beat me. Naruto grinned, he knew that he could usually get her riled up and he figured that he would put it to use on the battlefield. It won't work, she said. You can try all you want. You're just worried. I'll bruise that pretty face of yours. Oh, said Naruto as he tilted his head. So my face is pretty now, huh? Sh shut up, you idiot, she said, as a blush appeared in her face. 
As always, you only hear what you want to hear. Get ready to lose, Naruto. As Naruto laughs, go ahead and try, Purple Chan. You won't get the better of me. We'll see about that shark, as she said. As she rushed towards him, Naruto blocked her first attack before kicking her back to gain some distance between them once again. I'm no fool, said Naruto. Letting you in close will be no good, as long as you're using that weapon of yours. Then try to keep me away, she said, as she rushed back towards him. As Naruto ducked out of the way, allowing his muscles to relax and his body to warm up. As he continued to block and dodge her attacks, he had to make sure that she did not cut anything, even one scratch. It could mean him losing the fight. That sword of yours is really annoying, said Naruto, remembering what it did to Hayate. She grinned as she striked at him once again. I made this especially for you, so I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself. As Naruto jumped back as he immediately started to toss, Kuna is forward. She dodged him pretty easily though. Don't tell me that this is your best, Naruto, she said. How many times have I told you not to underestimate your opponents? Lightning style. Four pillar prison. Electricity shot out of the four corner that he had thrown next to her that she had simply dodged as they trapped her into a lightning prison. The currents then slammed right into her she cried out in pain. Within seconds she fell to the ground as smoke started to rise from the burn marks on her body. However a moment later her body poofed away in a puff of smoke. As Nurta eyes widened, when did she switch herself for the shadow clone? He started to feel with his eyes but he could not find her. He then looked down before leaping up in the air as she burst out, a kunai aimed towards him. As he twists and slams a brutal kick in said hand. Until poof, the real Uchiyo appeared above him. As Naruto jumped up in the air her kick came down right in his back, blasting him right towards the ground. As she landed and flipped away, you forgot, always pay close attention to your surroundings. As Naruto frowned as he picked himself up, he started to reach for his weapon until she rushed forward. Mooncutter, she said, as she slashed her sword diagonally. An invisible force shot towards Naruto. He leaped aside just in time thanks to Sharingan. That idiot, he said as he landed, name a technique after her own name. As he turned and saw the massive slash on the wall, and she almost cut me in half. Don't tell me that you're scared, Nurutakan, she said, as she charged forward once again, thrusting her blade towards him. A loud clang echoed through the stadium as Nurut and her passed one another. He had blocked her strike with a kunai. As they turned back and clashed once again, she slashed at him as Nurut sidestepped. As he brought his leg up and kicked her right in the face, he then flipped away. She did not let that slow her down though as she charged right back towards him as she thrust her blade and swung. Tearing the area apart as Naruto dodged, weave, and jumped away, she was making sure that she not look him in the eyes. As Naruto blazed through hand sign, fire style, fireball jutsu, the moment he said that she pulled a scroll from her waist as she opened and threw it, release, as water came exploding out of it, the fireball was outed as steam filled the entire area. Again a loud clang echoed through the stadium, when the smoke cleared both of them were matching each other. Blow for a blow. As Naruto blocked another strike from her blade, as he tightened his grip on his kunai, as sparks fly everywhere, that was until she felt something. As Naruto's weapon sliced right through her blade, before he kicked her in the stomach, blasting her away, she rolled before she picked herself up, holding onto her stomach. You use wind chakra in your kunai. You were never able to do that before. I still can't do it right away properly, that is why. I've been adding wind chakra to my kunai ever since the fight began. Little by little until it was strong enough, said Naruto. She frowned before she disappeared. She reappeared to his side as she pulled her heel back in mid-ear, aiming to strike it at his temple. As Naruto raised his right arm and blocked it. Before he could withdraw though, she slammed her other leg down as she grabbed onto his wrist and pulled. She used her knee to slam right into his side. As Naruto winks, she chopped him on the arm making him drop his kunai. She then spun and slammed two kicks into his stomach before she knocked back with a palm thrust right to his chest. As Naruto staggered back, she tried to attack once again but Naruto flipped away. Before he could land though, she shouted, 
water style. Great. Cannonball jutsu, she yelled, as she spewed the water from her mouth. There was no way that he could dodge this. But the moment the attack hit, Naruto burst into crows. No way. As they start to swarm her, the real Naruto appeared behind her as he placed a cone at her throat. Give up, he said. Bastard. You used the substitution at last moment, she said. However, a smirk then came on her face. I think I should thank you for showing me this particular jutsu. Naruto's eyes went wide as her body started to glow. Jumping back, great clone explosion as she went up in a violent blast. Naruto was thrown back by the force as he flipped, slamming his hand to the ground to stop himself. As she emerged from the tree that she was hiding behind, she looked exhausted. Her previous injuries had reopened as she was staggering towards him. The crowd was going crazy and cheering loudly. As for Naruto, he was bleeding from his shoulder. Come on, Naruto, she said. Let's settle this once and for all. With that, the both of them rushed forward as they infused their fists with chakra. They lay punch after punch, kicks after kicks until the both of them pulled their fists back, infused with chakra, and bam! They punched each other right across the face. The both of them fell over. She reached into her pouch and pulled out two kunais before she pulled and launched them towards Naruto. He rolled out of the way. However, she had placed ninja wires on them as she pulled back. The wires surrounded Naruto before they bind him though. He launched a single kunai towards her. She avoided it and let it pass. It's over, she said, until he vanished. Right in front of her eyes. He appeared next to her with a Rasengan in his hand. As he thrust the blue ball of chakra into her stomach, Rasengan, he said. The amount of force behind the attack not being enough to kill her, but it would surely take her out of the fight. She screamed out as she was blasted away. She slammed right into the wall before she collapsed on the ground. She could not move. Her body was dead exhausted. The only signs that she was still conscious was the tears coming from her eyes. As Naruto panted as he dropped to one knee, until he slowly got back to his feet, the examiner jumped down. Winner of the Chunin exam finals of Kanoha, Naruto Uzumaki. The spectators erupted in applause as Naruto calmly made his way towards her. Are you alright, he said. Even after all my training, I'm still weak, she said looking towards the heavens. You're definitely not weak. I mean, look at me, said Naruto. As she tried to move her head slowly. That still doesn't make me feel better, she said. Well, I can tell you with a promise that you're not weak, said Naruto. Come on, let me help you up. Her body was in pain, but Naruto reached down and scooped her up bridal style. As the people started to cheer even louder, as he walked off with her, Meanwhile, Hokage's box. Damn that kid. He almost gave me a heart attack, said Tsumi. For a moment, I thought he pulled off the Hiroshin until I noticed it was just a substitution with a kunai. Impressive indeed, both of their performance were something else. Hiruzen said as he watched Naruto carry his teammate out of the stadium. That last jutsu was a signature move of the late Hokage, was it not? Donzo said, I did not know that Jiraiya had taken on Another student under his wings. Why don't you ask him yourself, Hirsen said, as he nudged his head towards the back of the room. Jiraiya Sama, it's not often we see you in the village. How long have you been here, Inuichi said. Well, said Jiraiya, I was busy doing some research. How long have you been training in the Jinjuliki? And why haven't you told anyone about it, Danzo asked. Well, I didn't know I need your permission to take on an apprentice. Jiraiya said as he narrowed his eyes towards the man. I was already aware of this. So it doesn't concern you, Danzo, Hiruzen said. Well, I'll see you later, Sensei. I'm gonna go check on the kid. I have a present for him, said Jiraiya. As he flashed away. All the promoted Jennings will be given their ranks tomorrow. Let them rest today, Hiruzen said. Time skip. I'm fine, no Narutakan. Just because you beat me doesn't mean you have to show me any more pity. You should worry about yourself. I did quite the number on you after all. It was a few hours after the exam and Naruto was sitting by her bedside as he had a few bandages over himself as well. 
I am not showing you pity, said Naruto. I don't have anything to do at the moment and the medical staff will not allow me to leave the hospital yet. So you thought you could spend some alone time with me, where no one can disturb us, she said. As she spoke in a teasing tone, she saw the blush creeping up on his face as she laughed. I'm flattered, Naruto Khan, she said. As Naruto saw, her laughter turned into a look of grimace as she tried to hide her injuries. The pain that she was feeling as he knew that this was because of him. He might have went a bit overboard because he wanted to end the fight quickly so he used that technique. Does it still hurt Naruto Axe? She sighed in annoyance. Don't look at me like that. I told you. I'm absolutely fine she said. I'm sorry he said. What? She said confused. I said I'm sorry. I shouldn't have used a Rasengan on you. I promised Jiraiya Sensei that I would never use it on a comrade but... My mind went blank when I saw the opportunity just to end the match already so I just moved on instincts he said. She shook her head. It doesn't matter how you defeated me. What matter is I'm still weak even after all the training I've been through. I seriously thought I had a good chance of defeating you this time. But it seems I'm nowhere near you. You're definitely not weak said Naruto. The result of our match could have gone either way. You seriously kicked my ass this time and besides. I'm nowhere close to you in Kinjutsu. He meant what he said. She was definitely not the worst opponent that he could have asked for. She suddenly snapped her head up towards him. Speaking of Kinjutsu, you broke my sword you dunce. Do you even have any idea how much time I spent repairing and curing for that? As Naruto gulp under her glare. Don't worry he said. I'll get you a new one okay? She sighed before she shrugged. Fine. I'm too tired anyway, she said. As she closed her eyes, as he looked at her, she really did look exhausted. But even as she was covered in bandages, her purple ear falling all around her face, she was the prettiest girl he ever seen. The thought surprised him, and he felt the heat rise to his cheeks. Of course, he would never tell her that. She would never let him live it down. Thankfully, she still lied with her eyes closed, and his momentarily embarrassed state had gone unnoticed. As he noticed her breathing and even out, she had fallen asleep. A lock of her hair had fallen over her eyes. Without thinking he reached to push it away. But just as his finger touched her forehead she jolted awake. As Naruto snatched his hand back really quickly, a blush appeared on his face. Oh, what were you doing? she asked. She looked flustered. She also had a blush in her cheeks. Oh, was I sleeping? Oh, yeah, and you had something on your face, he said. She blinked as she reached up to her face. I did. It's gone now. Don't worry about it, said Naruto, trying to hide his embarrassment. As she saw that he was a bit embarrassed. However, a smile came on her face though. Thank you, Naruto Kan, she said. Yeah, sure, said Naruto. Anyway, you should probably get some sleep, said Naruto. As Naruto found his heart beating faster than normal, just then there was a sound at the doorway. As their heads turned towards it, Naruto was surprised when he saw. Snadi, Shizune, Jiraiya, and Hana standing there. Did we disturb you too? We can return later if you guys want. Hana said in a amused tone looking towards the both of them. Making Naruto face blush once again. As he pushed that away rather instantly. Bachan, Shizune, what are you guys doing here he said. Snadi narrowed her eyes. She looked suspicious but he couldn't think of anything that he did. To make her look like that, Jiraiya on the other hand had a big grin on his face and shooting Naruto a thumbs up. And he also looked like he was about to cry with pride as Naruto could only hope that it was because of the tournament results and not because of what he might have seen between Yujiyo and him. What were you two doing? You both look like we walked in on something. Hannah said with a playful smile. Sh shut up said Yujiyo. A light blush still on her face. He was just helping me. Helping her with what, Nurutakan? Hannah asked in an innocent, sweet tone as she received a glare from the both of them. She had something in her eye. I was helping her get it out, said Naruto. Well, if you say so, Nurutakan, Hannah said, as she tried to hold in her laugh. As Snedi looked towards Yujiyo, the girl shifted nervously before Snedi smiled. You must be Yujiyo Uzuki. I've heard quite a bit about you from Naruto during our last meeting. As Yujiyo nodded, it's an honor to meet you, Snedi sama she said. You're an inspiration for not just me but all, the Konoichis in the world. 
As Newt could hear the nervous quiver in her voice as she spoke. However, Snelly simply smiled at her warmly. So, not that I'm complaining or anything, but what are you doing here, Bachan? said Ruto. You could have informed me earlier. Well, when I heard that you were participating in shooting exams, I could not let the opportunity pass of seeing you in action and also earn some easy money, she said. As Naruto grew and as Jerry laughed, I feel used, Naruto thought to himself. Some things never change, Jerry said, but I'm feeling left out here. You haven't even given me a glance, Brett, and here I thought I found my perfect apprentice. As Naruto rolled his eyes, I'm not ignoring you, Jerry sensei I was just surprised to see Bachan and Shizune again. The old man already informed me that he'll be attending the exams. Damn, I told him to keep it a secret. But anyways, congratulations on the win, Brett. I'll see you later. I have to discuss some stuff with Sensei. As he gave Naruto a hearty pat on the back that nearly sent him sprawling before he made his way off. As Snelly sat down. So, you jail, huh? Tell me about yourself, she said. As she would like to get to know Naruto teammates. Time skip, Hokage's office. So how long will you be staying in the village this time, Jiraiya? Ask Hiruzen. Not long. I wish I could stay but you know my work. I can't afford to stay in one place for too long. Harrison nodded slowly. As he wondered was he putting too much work on Jaraya's shoulders. As he felt ashamed of himself for all the times he called upon Jaraya to do the near impossible. Had he failed as a teacher, father and village leader. Thinking back he wondered if he could have done things differently. Maybe then the student that he considered a genius wouldn't have betrayed the village. And the fourth Akagi wouldn't have need to sacrifice himself at such a young age. Don't think too much of the past, Sensei, Jerry said quietly. As Harrison considered his student. I didn't know that you could read me so well, Jerry. Well, I don't need to be an expert to know what you're thinking. Your silence says it all. But Jerry's insight was understandable. He knew the feeling of regret as well. He knew what it felt like to want to change things so badly, but they could not be changed. Harrison did not say anything in response. He just shook his head, shaking the thoughts out of his mind. There was no point in dwelling in the past. Perhaps I can give this hat to you and finally retire in peace. As you know, I'm not getting any younger as time passes. Not interesting. Try someone else, old man, Jaria said. Well, I've tried, Harrison said. By the way, where is Nelly? And why didn't you inform me earlier that she'll be coming back? Don't get your hopes up, Sensei. She's not going to stay. She just wanted to be here for Naruto and surprise him. And she asked me to be quiet about it. Well at least, she could have given me a visit first, Harrison said, with a heavy sigh. But he was not surprised. They were not exactly on good terms at the moment. So what did you want to discuss with me? Harrison said, changing the subject. Remember when I told you about a group that called themselves the Akaske? The same group our old friend has joined, Jaria asked. His face becoming serious. Orochimaru, you got something on him. Anything that revolved around a psychotic student, it could not be ignored. Apparently, he deserted the group some while back for some unknown reason. But what I do know is he done something to piss off the leader. I'm still trying to discover what that is. Anything else on him? Not yet. He went into hiding and I need some time to locate him again. Jure knew that they had to deal with his ex-teammate as soon as possible before he become a major problem for the village. As Harrison nodded grimly, it's all because of his weakness that Uruchimar even left the village. It was only his weakness that kept him from ending Uruchimar sooner. Keep your sources on look out Jure. We can't afford to let him do as he pleases and causes any unnecessary problems. Jure frowned but he nodded nonetheless. I wish things had never come to this. I still remember trying to talk some sense into him. Funny how time changes. What about the Akaski? Did you get any more information on them? Here is an axe. He knew a group full of S rank missing names would pose a great threat. However, at the moment, no one knew their motivation or their goals. But he couldn't afford to contact Itachi for any information, fearing that it might break his cover. The only information he had was the group consists of high S rank missing names from multiple villages working for the mercenary group. Their mission objective is unknown, but recently they've been taking missions from smaller villages and even that old goat Oniki 
has used them for high rank missions to be done for the hidden stone said Jaraya. This is troubling Jaraya. They can pose serious threats in the coming future. Jaraya nodded, don't worry. I'll try to get as much information as possible on them. But at the moment my main focus will be on locating Urchmar again. As Harrison looked at him, for the time that you'll remain in the village, you will spend that time training route I take it. Well of course Jaraya said, with a wide grin. As Harrison smiled, that kid is really something else. But sometimes, I really worry about him. Throwing himself into training and missions while closing his heart off to others would never do him any good. He wished that Naruto would talk a little about his feelings with others. Well at least there's a lot of improvement in his behavior since the last time I met him said Jiraiya. Hiruzen nodded. That was right after the events with Itachi and Shisui where he completely distanced himself from everyone. He still doesn't trust everyone but at least he's open with his teammates. I've seen some changes inside of him though since he met you and Sinedi as well. What worried me the most is Danzo is showing a lot more interest in him day by day. Danzo may show interest in him but Naruto is a mature kid sensei. He knows what is good and bad for him and Danzo know that. Harrison let out a long sigh. That may be true but we can't underestimate Danzo. I'll have to figure something out to do with him. Well don't worry too much about it sensei. I'll warn Naruto Jaraya said as he made his way towards the window. One more thing I want to ask though, is there something going on between Naruto and that purple ear girl on his squad? As there was a mischievous look in Jiraiya's face. Hiruzen laughed as he was rather amused. Well, I am not aware of it he said. Well anyways, I'll see you later sensei. With that Jiraiya jumped to the window. Hiruzen sighed. I hope I don't get any complaints from the bath houses. Time skip. One year later. As Naruto observed the busy movements around him as he walked on the budding street of Kanoa, beside him was Yujiu, laughing and chatting about. He was now 11 years old, a few months away from 12. It's been a year since he had taken the Chunin exams and became a Chunin, along with his two teammates. He has been doing missions with his teammates and partnering with other ninjas since his promotion, which has earned him their respect. Because of his performance on each mission, everything has been going great so far. He's been learning new skills in his life as a ninja and he was enjoying his life as well. Jure had left some time after the Chunin exams but he taught him some useful skills before he had left. His Obasan had left after a while as well. As she said that she could not stay, not to mention some dead collectors would be coming after her. A sensei was concerned about him not taking these off. As he ordered him to take at least a long break for a week, the Hokage had backed the order and told him to take a week off from the constant training. However, he had no idea what to do with his time other than training and missions so he felt like he was drifting in the ocean. He tried to sleep through the day but his body woke him up before even the sun had fully rise. Having no other choice he killed time by playing with the 5 year old grandson of the Hokage, Konohamaru. As Naruto loved spending time with him, everywhere he went Konohamaru followed him. As he called him big brother, the kid was beyond delightful to have Naruto there spending time with him seeing that Naruto was always away on missions. His time with Konohamaru also brought back some memories of his time with Itachi and Shisui as well. One thing he knew though he was not gonna leave Konohamaru the way they had left him. He was spending his vacation watching over Konohamaru when Yujiu had come and dragged him off. Hey, are you even listening to me? She broke him out of his thoughts. As Naruto blinked, before he turned towards her. You should watch where you're going you know, she said. Hey, you want to take a break over there? As she pointed towards his favorite ramen restaurant, Ichiwaku Ramen. Being Naruto he could not deny ramen. As they made their way inside, two miso ramen please said Yujiu. Come in, Naruto heard a voice from inside. Oh, if it ain't little Naruto can. I am, said Naruto with a smile. It's good to see you again. I thought you forgot about us, Naruto can. You hardly come for ramen anymore. Sorry, said Naruto. I've been really busy with missions lately. As Yujiyo smiled, I am noticed a girl as she looked. So, is she your girlfriend? As her father set down two bowls in front of the couple. Friend, said Naruto. 
Oh, I bet she's all disappointed now I am said. With a little tease in her tone as she looked over towards Eugeo. As Eugeo pretended like she did not hear. So how's the life of a Chunin been treating you? Well, I can't complain since the missions are more challenging. As Eugeo was fuming. And she quietly ate her ramen. I am nodded. Well, enjoy your ramen you two, she said. As she went to do something around the back. So, are you going to tell me what's on your mind, Rutakan? Ask you, Jail. You're quiet, but you're not usually this quiet. Knowing that she would not leave him alone until he tell her, he spoke up. Jiji told me that they're considering me for Anvu, and I was just thinking about that. You are really amazing, Han, huh, Rutakan, she said. As she looked down, her face was blank. I wish I was just like you. What do they call it? Yes, a true prodigy, she said. You should be dancing in joy right now. He glanced towards her as he knew that it was her dream to become an Anvu officer. And why do you sound so disappointed about it, said Naruto. Why shouldn't I be disappointed that I don't have talent like you? I'm always the one behind you, she said. You never mention about joining Anvu. It's been my dream since forever. And you just up and take it away from me, she said. As Naruto narrowed his gaze towards her. Talent. Talent, talent. I truly hate that word. I work hard like everyone else. I wasn't born strong. And if you're so upset about me joining Anvu, you should train to become strong instead of crying over it. Being a ninja doesn't mean competing with others. You will have to deal with so many awful, terrible things all the time. You will never achieve your dream with that kind of mindset, said Naruto. You, she said. I don't want you telling me how a ninja should be. As Naruto saw the anger in her eyes, she stood up. Enjoy your meal, Uzumaki, she said. Before he could say anything, she stormed off, making him frown. As Ayam came back around, she had heard their voice being raised. What's wrong, she said. Nothing. It's fine, said Naruto. Time skip. Hokage's tower. I hope you know why I called you here, Donzo. Hirsen said as he sat and puffed on his pipe. As Donzo stood with his old teammate, watching him. The last two meetings that they had had end with Naruto performance on various missions. And he suspected that the boy was the subject of this meeting as well. But surely Hirsen hadn't called him just to speak about Naruto alone. Just as you said before, it's been over a year. Since Naruto was promoted to Chunin, since then he has carried out his missions perfectly and having an impeccable ninja portfolio. It's hard to believe that he's only 11 years old. Donzo blinked surprised that Harrison was willingly talking about Naruto with him. I see. So finally you're seeing things from my point of view. We may have our differences Donzo but in this case we see eye to eye. Harrison always thought that he could perhaps work things out with Donzo. He could never deny the loyalty that Donzo had showed the village throughout the years. Get to the point, Harrison. What about Uzumaki? And why did you summon me? Harrison snorted a bit at his attitude. How our Anvu commander has made an interesting proposal. He wants Naruto to join Anvu. Donzo's face was calm and blank. I see, said Donzo. According to him, Naruto won't be able to use his abilities in the fullest capability as a regular Jonin. He thinks that Naruto possesses unparalleled talents as a ninja and he mentioned that it's our duty to guide him to a place where he can fully use his talents. So he came to me about the possibility of the boy joining Anvu. As Harrison did not break eye contact, not even for a second, as he looked into Donzo's dark eyes, Homura and Koharu are totally opposed. They say that it's too dangerous for him to join Anvil, with him being a Jinjuliki, Harrison said, as he released a puff of smoke out of his mouth. They even went as far as to bring up your name, saying that you will never support the idea of Naruto joining Anvil. Harrison knew that Danzo never thought much of the other two, and knew that this will get a, well, reaction out of the men. But Danzo was completely silent. I see. So you are also against. However, Danzo cut him off. Can't you just let him in then, Donzo said. Harrison narrowed his eyes in suspicion as he looked towards Donzo. He thought he would be opposed. But Donzo was not opposed in the slightest, 
Quite the contrary, in fact. The Anvil proposal was a godsend for Donzo. From the start, he had wanted Nurta to join Root, but Root was officially banned. So it would be suspicious if Nurta was to suddenly disappear for an extensive period of time for his training. Nurta Uzumaki was an essential figurehead of this village. So much so that Donzo believed that he had what it takes to be Hokage in the future. Just like his father, Minato Namikaze, Naruto would not hesitate to make the hard decisions. He was a perfect choice for a future Hokage. I know you have quite the impression on him, but I thought you would disapprove of having him join in Anvu. Hiruzen did not even try to hide the look in his eyes. Donzo remained calm under his gaze though. Naruto is a sort of ninja that you see. Every maybe 100 years, we cannot afford to not take advantage of everything that he has to offer to this village. That answer is very much like you, Hiruzen said, like he was trying to convince himself of something. I am not 100% sure of letting him join Anvu this early, but since Naruto has shown his interest, I have decided to place him on their team row, under Kakashi Hatake. Kakashi will take care of him and teach him the inner workings of the Anvu. Donzo was just grateful that Hiruzen approved of Naruto early entry into the Anvu, whatever the reasons might be. Of course, Naruto is still so young. I'm not sure if you should fully join yet. Before the official assignment, therefore, we will need to see if he's ready for Anvu. So, a mission to join the Anvu, huh? Donzo said, looking towards Hiruzen. Precisely. Would you leave that to me, Donzo said. He had the perfect mission for Naruto. But guys, be in some so right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in your social media platform. And stay in tune for the rest of what ifs coming your way over the other channel, guys. Yes, I indeed have four of them, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. And don't forget to comment down below so I can welcome you personally, guys. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say we jump right the hello to fear. See you guys soon. Peace.